this is not a passive cooler. No, this is Deepcool's Assassin 4S. And despite the current issues revolving around the brand and half the Western Hemisphere, I live in Europe and I still have access to this. And this is a very interesting one because it has a fan, it's just hidden. Underneath this magnetic plate, we will find pretty much the same setup we had inside the regular Deepcool Assassin 4. Actually, to make this very clear, this is a regular Assassin 4. Spec-wise, it's exactly the same thing. Still, the same 147mm thick cooler, which is 160mm high, or 163 actually, the same 7.6mm heat pipes, and even the 1800 RPM quick 61.25 CFM at up to 3.76mm of H2 static pressure fan in the middle. Exactly the same. The only difference between a 4 and a 4S is the missing reverse fan in the back. Which then also means that we can expect this to be a slightly lower performing version, but also slightly quieter, of the original 4. But before we find that out, let's cover the rest of the basics. The Assassin 4S comes inside a similar yet smaller package as the original one, containing the mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, some thermal paste, and a Allen wrench with a Phillips tip. And on that note, I just want to give one very negative point which I encountered, the thermal paste was open for at least my cooler. No clue if that is a widespread issue, but you don't want your thermal paste to be exposed to air for a longer period. That thing will dry out. That's really, really bad. Anyway, to get the cooler going on Intel, we need to position the Intel backplate behind the motherboard using the Intel spacers, then followed by the Intel retention brackets with the CPU arrow pointing towards the chip, magic, and then make everything stay in place using the thumb screws. Over on AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets, replace them with the AMD spacers, followed by the retention brackets, again CPU arrow pointing towards your room heater, and end things with the thumb screws. From there, pop off the magnetic top cap, pull on the two levers to pull the fan out, install the cooler on top, and put everything back inside. Now, in theory, you can install the cooler in both orientations, and because you can also turn the fan around, you can basically do whatever the heck you want. But the actual orientation would be with these squares here to towards the RAM, which would also give you the 100% RAM compatibility because there is nothing touching the RAM sticks. And that paired with a somewhat moderate 163-164 mm height. To finish off the cooler, in the bottom we got a pretty big 395 by 46 mm nickel plated base and in the top we got the small and glowing deep cool logo powered by the fan's PVM signal. And before we jump into the benchmarks, we also got a little speed toggle in the top, like the original had. This one can throttle down the max fan speed to 1450 RPM max. Of course, throttling down would also throttle down performance, but I don't see this being useful at all on here. And you will see why. Starting off with the Intel benchmarks, where we benchmark each cooler on top of a 3900K featuring three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. We start each of them at 100% fan speed and then we slowly lower the fan speed and measure the noise and performance at each step to create a noise to performance curve. At 120 watts and allowing the cooler to push whatever it can, allowed the CPU to stay at 34.3 degrees C above ambient. Which is interesting, it's 2 degrees behind the original one, but that was to some degree foreseeable given it only has a single fan. And there are actually two ways of looking at this. If you try to filter coolers or dual tower coolers with a high heat pipe count, this is one of the worst coolers we have ever had on the table. But that one single 1800 RPM fan not only has to pull through a heatsink, it also has to push through another one. That's quite the workload for a single fan. But the thing is, noise. Given it's not a fantastic like temperature result, but at its max, it's not loud anyway. Between 39 and 40 dB max. That's not a lot to begin with. And from there going down, it almost aligns with the AK620, after which it then drops down quite a lot. But never to the point of something other comparable like the Dark Rock 4. Compared to the Assassin 4, it's what we expected. The regular 4 can push a lot harder thanks to the second fan, but once they align, the single fan version stays slightly behind due to, well, two fans are better than one. Another interesting comparison will be the Freezer 36. This might be a single tower, yet dual fan cooler, sure, but size-wise, it's not that far off. And this one also doesn't prevent you from buying fancy FPS enhancing RGB RAM. There at the top end, the Assassin 4S is a bit louder, but at 90% fan speed, they align pretty perfectly. After which we get back to that drop. Coming to 250 watts on Intel, here the Assassin 4S managed to keep the chip at 69.3 degrees C above ambient, now almost 5 degrees behind the original. 
and showcasing that yes you have one fan but like maybe two heat sinks are a bit much for one fan. And the corresponding noise to performance graph shows that we really reach the limits of this cooler. From start to finish, it now loses against everything and it never quite reaches noise floor before hitting thermal throttle. But hey, there is a brief moment at which it outperforms the Freezer 36, which kinda makes sense. If all the fans aren't doing anything anymore, it's normal that the one with more heatsink wins. But as far as Intel goes, it's pretty clear that this is not a high performance cooler. Sure, it got two heatsinks and seven heat pipes, but only a single fan. And our benchmark showed that its biggest strength lies within lower heat loads, 120 watts, so everything below a 14700K or gaming only. There is the sweet spot. But it's not the best generally. Arctic Freezer 36, which is comparable by size, is generally the better option and it can go for a little bit longer. But credit where credit is due. For a single fan, being able to keep up this graph is pretty impressive in the first place. And now over to AMD. Here we benchmark a bit differently. We use a 7950X3D and we measure the average core clock across all cores and we allow the built-in reduction function to do its thing and compare the coolers based on the speed that they can sustain in 10% steps for the fan speed. And for the Assassin 4S, it wasn't quite able to keep the average clock speed above 5 GHz, something that the regular Assassin 4 wasn't capable of doing either, but as soon as both equalized, they briefly kept the exact same noise to performance ratio for some time. But after a while, the ratio of the 4S dropped significantly down to like below Dark Rock Elite level, which by the way is also interesting because towards the higher end, the 4S outperforms it. Just to, to give you an idea how bad the Dark Rock 5 series, essentially also the Elite, is on AMD. Also interesting here is the, the AK620, which sucked on AMD's 3D chip in comparison to both the 3S and regular 4. Interesting. For both AMD and Intel, this is not a ultra high performance cooler. This isn't built uh, for production level workloads and this shouldn't be paired with an i9, Ryzen 9, don't, don't do that. Once you go lower, let's say 14600K or lower tier Ryzen, sure, this becomes very interesting. At least on Intel, we saw that the Assassin 4S delivers quite the result for just a single fan cooler. But the biggest benefit of this thing is just the noise. It is just not loud to begin with. And in my opinion, this has a perfect use case. This is, uh, for me, for smaller form factor cases that you got sitting on the table right next to you, like next to your face. Because there is no back fan that pushes up the noise significantly. And the only fan that is there is sandwiched in between two heat sinks, which kind of act like a buffer in this case. So you got a somewhat silent result. And I believe this is especially important for like desk setups where the back fan is somewhat close to you. And if you pair that with, let's say, good airflow only fans, slow spinning silent wings, for example, Nokia's S series, and you pair that with the, the intake and exhaust fans of the case, you got a very silent result. But let's talk about the one thing I do not understand about this approach. The price is off. 85 euros right now and here. That's just way too much. Given what an Arctic Freezer 36 costs, this is way too much. But it gets even dumber because a regular Assassin 4 costs 79 bucks. Someone explain this to me. The dual fan, let's say power version, costs less than the smaller spec one. How is that possible? And what exactly prevents anybody from buying an Assassin 4, except for this of course by the Nero, from buying an Assassin 4, screwing off the back fan, repurpose it as a paperweight, and enjoy the exact same cooler? It is the same cooler, for 5 bucks less with an additional fan. No, so far, if that price doesn't drop significantly, and I mean like below 50 bucks, I don't see why this should be worth it. And yeah, sure, the white version costs 79, which again doesn't make any sense at all, and it now costs as much as the big one, which uh, it's just confusing. If the cooler drops below 50, sure, good approach, really quiet at max, and good option for gaming or lower tier CPUs, as long as you stay, like let's say, below 200 watts, it's going to be cool and quiet. But until the price drops, wait or get something else. But okay, this should be everything on the Assassin 4S. And at this point, a huge thank you to Deepcool for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. 
except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to pay some data analysis guy to figure this one out for me. It, it's just weird. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our video where we compared a mini PC to a similarly priced pre-built. It didn't go as planned. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.